Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today we're looking at a series of work in progresses. All of the same craft though, this is multiple saves of the same design as it evolved over time. I decided I'd go ahead and do one of those videos again where I go, hey, this is kind of my process. So first of all, you'll notice I'm using a seat and a probe core. And the reason why is neither of these two cockpits really fit the idea for what I'm trying to make. And as you might have noticed at the top here, it says F4 Whip 1. This was an attempt at making an F4, which is uh, a very old American fighter. I forget who made it, but uh, I don't remember much detail about it either. I remember really enjoying flying it in Ace Combat, and it has a really nice look to it. So I wanted to make that, and just none of the cockpits really fit that look. So I started trying to make my own. And in this version, you can see I've worked on angling these a bit more. I did a lot more of work in progress saves on this than I usually do. And this one, it's still very sleek and small, but it's it's wrong. The cockpit, the uh, the the it's not thick enough for a Kerbal, really. And I really wanted to make this as small and sleek as possible, even though I'm replicating a large fighter. The F-4 is a large aircraft after all, but as you might be able to gather by the state of this work in progress, I'm making kind of a smaller version of it. You can see this is essentially this is essentially the size of it. It it's a, it gets a little longer than this, but this is essentially the core of the craft right here. You can see we have two Juno jet engines as our power, and uh, you can see it's it's a very simple design overall. You can see I've made the uh, cockpit area a little bit bigger, a little more accessible. The 3.1 was just me adding this on here so that I, this uh, lander can on here so that I could test it out. Honestly, I don't know why I saved it like that. As you can see here with the whip 4, I already have the, uh, I already have an Elevon in place for the sort of middle plate. If you look at an image of an F4, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's like a, a little like plate kind of spot be between the two engines on the back. And so I was trying to do that here. This is still, you know, heavily work in progress, of course. And you can see I've kind of started making this kind of sleeker body design. And there is a gap in the top, unfortunately. But you can see this is kind of the idea evolving. Of course, basically, that's the whole point of this series of videos is just showing you how I went through this process. You can see here I'm working on trying to style this a bit better. As you can see, I've closed the gap by adding another control surface in there. Of course, these are all unmovable control surfaces, uncontrolled surfaces. I've also added this adjustable ramp intake here to have kind of a sleeker belly, which I really like. It looks a little weird here, but I think it looks all right. And I believe I cover it up later in the later work in progresses. As you can see, I can have a little Oscar B and I don't modify its contents because I was thinking at the time that I might need to put a fuel cell on board. I ended up not needing to, but that was a thing. And here I'm coming up with the basic idea of what the wing is going to be. I decided that these parts probably worked best, although I did change that later on. I also decided that this would work better for that plate in between things. And you can see this is generally the shape. It's still not quite right. I end up changing this whole section a bit, elongating it, etc. And... You can see here I've added the, whatchamacallit, an I-beam there. But the problem is, no, never mind, I already fixed it in this version. When I first added this I-beam, it was actually further back and it clipped into the engines, which I really hated. So that's why I had to change it. That's also why I changed from an Elevon 2 or Elevon 3 or whatever it was to the basic fin here, was because the basic fin is thinner, so it doesn't clip into the engines. And this was just another test of a Kerbal getting in. I wanted to see if this headrest made sense. I skipped 8 by accident, as I often do when doing a lot of these, especially when I'm focused more on the craft than the number, which, you know, is a better thing in my opinion. Focus on the craft, not the number. You can see I've initially added these advanced canards, I decided I would use those for the tail fin, because I think they're closest to what I'm trying to accomplish and the appropriate size. Because I'm making this smaller than it should be, I figured that would work. Uh, maybe not the best idea in retrospect, but eh. And the Whip 10 has the wings duplicated finally, although still not actually put into place. I believe I've also subtly, yes, I've rearranged the advanced canards so they're down angled a bit more. They're flush with the ship a bit more, flush with the uh, upper area a bit more. And as you can see, I haven't noticed yet that the wing is clipping into the intake. The Whip 11 is where I added these, uh, 
AVR8 winglets on the end because I decided that there would be winglets on the edges of the wings to get that iconic wing up tip on the F4 since this is like I said it's based off an F4 Phantom and here basically the difference is I've started working on the wings I've tried to get them looking better lined up better as you can see this is kind of more flush in here I've also changed the wing connector if you notice it's it's a very subtle thing but it makes a big difference the other wing connector type I was using was, I think it's called a, no, not a B, a, an E, which, if you look, it has, it's wider. It's not as long, but it's wider, and I needed the width to be as small as possible so that these control surfaces could be closer in, because I'm trying to capture the look of the F4 more accurately in that manner. With this version, it's just more work on the wings generally. I did several variations that were just working on the wings, trying to get them lined up better so that it doesn't clip into this or doesn't clip too much into that, trying to get this to not clip, trying to get this to line up, trying to get this to look nice. It's, it was very, very difficult to get the wings to look nice and function. I believe this, this is a case of a work in progress that I saved a copy of it and then abandoned it and redid similar things but not the same in another version because as you can see I named it Whip 14 Shit because I like some of what I did with the wing here and I didn't like other parts of what I did with the wing here. And here we have Whip 15 Incomplete which I don't remember why I named it Incomplete on it. I, I really don't. Oh, I know because this is clipped in here so if you see when I move it yeah, I named it incomplete because it was a version that if I tried to continue work from it, I might forget that that was still clipping and then I'd hate myself when it ended up being a problem. More wing work. It's very, very subtle, the differences, but I'm slowly getting better. I'm slowly liking the design more. This one has these rotated a bit so that this line is straight and you'll notice now that the trailing edge is pretty much linear, which is what I was going after. Skipped 17 by accident. Here I've added landing gear and a capsule and we had our first test. I ended up testing without a Kerbal in the capsule by accident because I forgot I had a probe core and could actually go without a Kerbal. Whip 19 probably has some adjustments to the landing gear. At this point that's what I was doing. Oh yeah I forgot to mention the tail fin. I forget when that came in and I wasn't paying close enough attention to notice but yeah landing gear adjustments maybe tail fin adjustment probably not. Um, oh yes the canard was actually adjusted at some point and again I didn't notice which version did that but it was angled down slightly. This might even be the version because this would be after the first test flight so this makes sense for when I would have decided to do that. Then again I might have done that before the test flight based on taking a look at where the center of lift was because if I go here and I set it to more straight up you can see the center of lift is way too far forward. And whip 20 is special because whip 20 is basically as I would release it if I was going to release it. The problem is I'm not sure if I'm going to release it. Also I actually didn't check the drogue shoot to see if it's um, clipping when you deploy it. I actually haven't checked it but you can see here I've added some struts to kind of give it this cockpit look more of a cockpit look. Unfortunately they do clip into the Kerbal's helmet when you have a Kerbal in there, but uh, that doesn't bug me too much. Anyhow, you can see I have a light here and a fuel cell to have the uh, kind of look there, make it look more closed in. And see I've used some various science instruments to kind of give you like an instrument panel so it hopefully looks more like a cockpit. I've seen uh, other people do that technique, specifically to Matt Guy, who is really cool and made really cool planes. He, he hasn't made anything in a little while, or at least hasn't posted making anything in a little while, but that's kind of a concept I got from him. And yeah, this is pretty much done. This is where I'm going to fly it. I have to stop right now to go take care of laundry, but uh, hopefully I'll come back and give you a little video. All right, I'm back. Nothing appears to have happened for you, hopefully, maybe, I don't know. Anyhow, yes, this plane thing is going to, I'm going to fly, I almost forgot. I need to manually put the, never mind, he's already in there. I actually really need to see if I can cool my room down. My computer is angry at me. But in any case, we're going to have Jebediah get on board in the command seat. And you can see, like I said, those, what you call it, struts go right through his helmet, unfortunately. But otherwise, otherwise, it's a nice little cozy area. He's not clipping into anything. He looks nice and comfortable there, which I quite like. Anyhow, let's get that out of the way. Of course, we're going to have to run it over to actually truly get it out of the way but uh, let's go ahead and disable the brakes and try and get moving around it okay hold on hold on come on get off get up see it's kind of difficult to get around there we go sort of 
Fuck it, let's engage the engines. Okay, there we go. Yes, we're free. All right, now we can go take off. Gosh, that is so bad to deal with, which is unfortunate. Anyhow, let me double check. Yes, so these control surfaces are for roll, which are just like an F4. Of course, we have yaw on the uh, vertical stabilizer, and we have pitch on the, whatchamacallit, the advanced canards on the back there. And as you can see, the maneuvering is quite limited. And yeah, that's 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 what you get. Because this is supposed to be like miniature, because it's using Juno engines, because it's using these advanced canards, which don't have a large amount of deflection, because it has to use some of that deflection just to stay level. In fact, quite a bit. In fact, I should probably tilt those down a bit more. Because of all these factors, maybe move the wings back a little if I can as well. Because of all these factors, in fact, I definitely uh, I might be able to. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. This is a work in progress after all. I was pretty much considering this the done version, but I think I'll do some changes. Also, I don't remember when I fixed the wings being clipped in there, but yeah, I fixed that at some point and forgot to take a look for it. But in any case, this flies all right as long as you're very careful. Now, one thing I want to point out right now, as you're seeing me flying this, doing this turn, you might notice that I am applying quite a bit of yaw. Um, well, I, there's always yaw being applied when you're doing turns like this, but you might notice that I am manually doing the yaw. It's not the SAS that's yawing at a particular rate or whatever. And that's because this has an unfortunate side effect of being made of a lot of aerodynamic surfaces on the outside. And that is that it actually has a huge amount of uh, like body lift so that when you tilt sideways, you can see we're getting quite a lot of lift there. And if I yaw opposite way, we came very close to losing control there. This time I'm going to purposely like completely lose control. I'm going to yaw as hard as I can. And you can see we get body lift and we get that hard yawing motion. And fortunately, we regain control quite quickly in that instance. But uh, essentially, if you're not careful, let's say I'm doing uh, just trying to do a barrel roll here. You can see that I am generating a lot of lift going up like that. And I'm just kind of stuck in this orientation right now. You know, I'm desperately trying to move into a different orientation and I'm just stuck in it. And so I might be able to, yeah, by yawing real hard while also doing all this maneuver, I can actually successfully, looks like I can successfully do a barrel roll. But even then, it's very, very difficult. And you can see I actually over yawed and that caused a problem. So you can see this thing has a hard problem when it comes to those kinds of maneuvers well any maneuver really you have to be very careful with it or you can lose control and if you're at a low altitude like i am right now that that losing control can be the death of you as you can see there yeah fortunately in this case it looks like we survived but uh yeah that's a thing that can happen. I love how far that bit scraped. Let's take a look at the bits that are left. We got the, uh, oh, 0% really on that I-beam that was on the bottom side. We got, uh, looks like this was, this is in the rear. This was attached to an engine. It has the landing gear on it. This is nothing because it's clipped under the surface or something and I can't get down there. This, this is very interesting. This is the top section. Interesting. So you can see some of the, uh, aerodynamic surfaces there you can see various things were pushed and clipped around by the impact this this whole area was basically deformed into the tail which is fucking crazy and uh you, oh that's just the uh what we launched from you can see this bit hold on oh okay that's a glitch that i have those turned off but this one's showing for some reason hey look this is part of the cockpit yeah how much damage do you have how much damage does any of you have any no, looks like, oh, I can't, there we go. Yeah, no no damage on any of that. We got a wing here. Any damage on those? Nope. And of course we have the Kerbal that survived it. So with that said and shown, all these variations, there is one that I have not opened. And that's because it's not really an F4 and it has uh, various characteristics that are different. First of all, you might have noticed these engines. These are MJ88 mini vectors. These are from the B Dynamics or Bahamuto Dynamics parts pack and let's see what else has changed i know that these are operational for roll and i believe both of these are unoperational yeah they're both deactivated 
So this moves the roll control to these winglets. Of course, we still have pitch control on just this. Mm, excuse me, on just the uh, advanced canard. But we also have vectoring on those engines. Uh, pretty, pretty good, pretty darn good vectoring. Also, I used uh, the adjustable landing gear and replaced the landing gear. Uh, they're very boring. They're very, they're just sticks essentially. Like I haven't, I didn't try to do something cool with their layout or how they come out or you know, anything like that. I just kind of was like, I'm gonna have them like this, just kind of their standard form and just put at an appropriate height. And there we go. This one doesn't come with a capsule attached to it because I'm lazy or something. And I just remembered I still never checked on the radial mount drogue chute. Now I forgot to mention, besides the thrust vectoring, these engines also have, uh, what is it, like three or four times the amount of thrust as the other ones? So this plane, despite being small, has a, a lot of the same like uh, power capability as a larger plane. In fact, also, speaking of things, I noticed that uh, because of that, because of the shape of things and the speeds involved here, it actually needs to pitch down to maintain its stability. That's interesting. You can see it uh, rolls rather quickly. So quickly that the frame rates can't cope, can't cope, can't keep up. And you can see it pitches rather well, better than the other version at least. And it still has the same susceptibility to extreme yaw leading to problems. However, it can recover from them much better. Uh, of course, one thing that does happen is it, you will break off a, an advanced canard doing extreme maneuvers with this thing because you can generate extreme stresses doing hard yaw maneuvers. And see, now we're doing super maneuverability stuff that an F4 would not be able to do at all. But because it has these vectoring engines on here, it can. Also, I believe those engines, they don't quite, but they very nearly will just thrust right into the tail of the plane, which is kind of bad. But uh, overall, overall, not too shabby, not too bad. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay, yeah. There's a little, there's a little cone here to kind of protect the fact that you would otherwise be able to see in here. You can see there's fuel lines and there's also some struts in here holding everything together. Uh, I don't remember which variation I added that on. It was near the end, like after I did the first test flight, because, you know, I determined that it needed to be shredded. I mean, I knew all along it would need to be shredded. We have this long central pole going down the middle, and then uh, a carrier bit underneath. Like, it's it, it definitely would need the struts. There's no way to avoid that. That's interesting. I completely managed to destroy the tailplane by overheating it from aerodynamic stresses. That is interesting, and as you can see, because we have thrust vectoring, we're flying all right despite having no pitch other than the thrust vectoring. Of course, if I turn off the engines now, we're screwed. So, what I have to do is try to land while keeping the engines going at a higher thrust than you'd want, because we need them to maintain pitch control. As you can see, I've turned them down to two-thirds throttle, and we've already had issues maintaining enough thrust. Fortunately, we do have a drogue chute. Good, that looks all right. And the drogue chute can help us slow down. In fact, let me throttle up with the drogue chute out, right? That way we have the advantage of more thrust from the engines and the drogue chute helping us slow down so that we can come in for a nice safe landing. So this actually isn't going to be difficult at all. Ah, yes. So there you have it, the F4 Phantom, the real, real version, although I'm not going to call it an F4 Phantom because it's far too small, like I said, I made basically a small version of a plane that should be bigger, and I'm hopefully going to make like a bigger version, although it took me a long time and it was very difficult just to make this version, so I'm not sure when I'll do that or how much time that'll take, but yeah, that's a thing, here's a thing, we're going to go ahead and activate the brakes pretty soon, actually I need to pitch up a little bit more and roll, hold on, damn it, okay let's go ahead and turn the engines down and pitch up just a little bit, all right we're on the ground, brakes enabled, cutting the engine which means we're gonna lose our pitch control but we're on the ground so that shouldn't be a problem and as you can see we pretty safely come to a stop very nice. Does the steering work? Yes, it does. Good. Yeah. So there you go. 
Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space.